Hey, welcome to the palace where the gates are always open, especially when you're listening and watching Star Wars. This is Star Wars Sense Episode 7. This is a special episode, a character episode for characters that are non Jedi, non Sith, droids, and excluding characters from Rogue One, Han Solo, the Star Wars story, and the new saga. Those are all going to be episodes that are coming, or you could already see Jedi episode and Sith. Check out our channel for those episodes. So we got in the house, we got Babo Sweeney, the or the other half of Star Wars Sense. What's up, Babs? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We got Zachary Roy, your boy, Mr. Grilled Cheese himself. There he is, Jazz, the Jazz yes, fan. Sir. And then we got B Zizzle. Let's go. So right, he's got that grievous gate on the on the palace. So, all right, so we're gonna go chop it up. Um, obviously, Zach and B B Z have a little bit of the you know knowledge of some of these characters, so we want to get their opinions. Um, Babs has that deep lore. I got a little bit of it in between. So we're gonna start with Chewy. Chewy Babs, tell us what kind of a character Chewy is, and then we'll get the opinion. Of, of uh, Zach and BZ, because I know they know who he is. Hey, yeah, so Chewie, he's obviously pretty much everyone knows he's a Wookiee, right? And his signature, his signature sound and his the signature way he talks. And he's Han's friend, right? He's Han's uh, right hand man, and he's also Han's muscle because Wookies are extremely strong. They they are known to rip limbs off people and things like it's nothing. So yeah, so we see. We see the the siege of uh, his planet, um, Kashyyyk, right in mm -hmm. episode episode three there, and we see Yoda talking with him in Tarful before he leaves on the shuttle and everything. So, yeah, Chewie's a Chewie's a pretty influ influential character, and uh, he's beloved by fans for sure. So, I'll get your boy's opinion on Chewie. So, yeah. Zach, what do you think? I love Chewie. I can't hate Chewie. He's like one of those iconic characters, like as a kid that everybody knows. Like he's just one of those, like Halloween character that you walk around as. Like Chewie, you gotta love Chewie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's scary. He's a, he's a force for sure. Uh, BZ, what are your thoughts, bro? Chewie's the OG goat, probably one of the most recognizable Star Wars characters, as Zach said for sure for my generation at least. And then, yeah, I mean. Where can you go wrong with, with Chewbacca, bro? He's sick. So, and yeah. if anything, he's going to keep going in the uh, in the movie. So we'll see. Yeah, yeah he pops up in a lot of them. Uh, but can you, any of you guys do the, the Chewie call? I can't. Not even to try. Actually. All, right. All right. Moving on to our next, which is his, <laughs> other, his other half is Han Solo. Han Solo, obviously, you can see his origin story, at least told through the Han Solo story, uh, the movie. But uh, Babs lead off Han Solo. He obviously teams up with Chewie. They're they're both you know co-piloting the Millennium Falcon. He's a what outlaw? He's a smuggler. He's a he's a jerk. He's a dirtbag. Tell us about Han. <laughs> I wouldn't say he's a dirtbag. He's just he's he's tough. He's rough around the edges for he's sure. Yeah, he's a he's a, he's a smuggler and he's uh yeah he's definitely an outlaw. That's for sure. He does not abide by the law. That's and definitely not the Empire's law. That's he's that's like a cowboy. He's a space sure. cowboy, bro. He's a space cowboy. Yeah, he's, he's a cowboy, but uh, Boba Fett's Clint Eastwood. But uh, there you go. That's, that's yeah. why they stand off. So, all right, what do you boys uh, think about Han Solo down down over here? Yeah. Han Solo is the Wild West shooter of the space, as you said. He's just like the man. He's the good guy version of Boba Fett, basically. So. If, you want to pick a side, you pick one or the other. And I definitely would side with Han Solo just because he's the good guy and he's got the girl and everything. Yeah, Harrison Ford definitely was a smooth, smooth dude. So, uh, Zachy, what you got? I like him because he's kind of like the Batman of Star Wars where he doesn't have any powers, he didn't have anything. I mean, there's a few others, right? But when it comes to, like, main characters, he's the one dude that just shoots a gun and he's dope mm -hmm. and he just runs around and he gets the girl like bz said and he's got a a giant alien monster dog friend named chewbacca that as you said does the heavy lifting for him and kind of, he's a sweet character he's really overlooked i think in a lot of like people's eyes he's smooth and he's a thief but mm -hmm. I mean, he's, you know mm -hmm. i think he's badass i mean harrison ford 
I mean, he's synonymous with Han Solo and Indiana Jones. So definitely yeah. dope. Uh, moving on to Leia, which ties to Han. Tell us about Leia Organa. Babs, I know she's force sensitive. She's not technically, uh, you know, can wield the, the force. But tell us about Leia and her role in this entire space of Star Wars. Can feel and somewhat wield the force. But, yeah, obviously uh, connected as a, as a Skywalker, as Luke's sister. So, you know, we first see her in A New Hope as um, – the princess, the one that they go are, are going to save, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah, R2 delivers that message, and it's history from there. So, yeah, I think there's a lot of fanboys that uh, love episode six for that, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> the homies know what I'm talking about. But yeah. I know, yeah, I know what you're talking about, boy. <laughs> Zach, tell us what's on your mind, bro. Leia, what's on my mind, as he said, dude, Leia and Carrie Fisher back in the day, rest in peace. Mm -hmm. Rest in peace, man. Beautiful woman. And wow. so, it, mm, so, so it really makes, you could say. Uh, and so we were talking to Dino stream earlier today. I don't know if you were there, but I was getting mad at him. You can't knock Luke. He didn't know. He had no idea. There's a princess who's like the princess. Oh, I saw you and Dino going back at it, but but his his argument is he could sense it with the force that that was a sister. See, see, I just think he sensed love. I I don't think he understood that. I just he felt attraction. Does that make sense? Yeah, Not I mean, like slave Leia, right? Slave Leia. Yeah. Slave so he kissed his sister. So he kissed his sister. Basically, is what he did. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but, he was all oh, chained yeah, up. Brother, feel the love. Know? With a, with a bikini top, but at the so. time she wasn't she was just the fucking v princess of the galaxy yeah you know? but uh bz do you agree with that statement about leia uh she's cool or whatever she's i like slave leia when she gets captured by jabba the hut uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah i'd be surprised if you didn't like that so yeah uh, you really like that yeah all right let's move on we got a couple oh go ahead bz did you have another thought bro you good <laughs> no, I was just saying that's her best appearance for sure. <laughs> that's I hope that's her VV and FP. I mean, oh, I hope that's her FA, bro. Not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. Uh, all right, uh, Babs, talk to us about Boba Good Fett happy. slash Jango Fett and why you think they're both one and the same or close. Obviously, we got you know those in the current Boba Fett show that he's back out of the Sarlacc pit, right? That's that that's uh, been out now. So talk about Jango Fett, Boba Fett. Tell us about that connection. So yeah, so Django Fett is actually um, not the first one we see. We actually see Boba in episode five. He gets the Spurs <clears throat> sound effect, and he is the Clint, East Clint Eastwood of Star Wars. So yeah, he gets introduced, and then we later learn about his dad in the prequels, and and then Django. later actually his Django his story. Yeah, exactly. So Django actually requested a hundred percent unaltered clone. For to be his son, and we actually learned about in the Bad Batch there was a couple others, um, Echo being one of them, but uh, mm -hmm. not to Django's knowledge actually too. But um, so, yeah, he's the model for the whole clone army, right? And uh, the unaltered essentially means that um, Boba like matured at a regular rate, not at an advanced rate or anything. He like basically lived a regular human life, so he is essentially a regular son pretty much mm -hmm. with the Kamin the Kaminoans of of Camino their their technology he pretty much is an exact kid essentially so yeah, yeah. Well, no, yeah. now Boba Fett was obviously a bounty hunter and and he did a lot of heavy work for you know the the, the dark side Darth Lord himself Darth Vader right what oh, yeah. was the first words that Vader said to Boba <laughs> what, what was that line that you love to say it's uh just it's just awesome so yeah they're on the ship and then there's a couple of bounty hunters there and they kind of get like some dirty looks because they wouldn't necessarily be like invited or whatever yeah. they're Bosch and i-88 are in there with yeah the yeah and bosk's his claws like hanging over the little command center it's awesome and then uh yeah boba boba gets a direct from vader no disintegrations because yeah, he's known to be ruthless, man. He's crazy. Oh, was it, yeah, bro? Well, so we can't wait to see. Watch uh, Boba Fett on Disney+. Plus. Look for him for future installments. We're going to have a review for Boba Fett. 
Um, and Django Fett, obviously, go watch the prequels and more stuff that's going to might tie into the Obi-Wan show. So going into that, well, real quick before that, Bo, talk about Boba Fett, Zach. You might know about little Django and then BZ yeah. also. What are you guys' thoughts on Boba? I just know the basic knowledge, obviously, that they're bounty hunters, that they appeared what? Or what episodes are they in? First three? Episode two was in the prequel, but then uh, the Boba Fett in the originals was, uh, I think, uh, Empire... Uh, in uh, Empire Strikes Back, in the second one. Yeah. Yep, that's mm-hmm. when he that's when he first appears. Yeah, and then he yeah. dies in or dies in Return of the Jedi. He goes into the Sarlacc pit in Return of the mm-hmm. Jedi. Yeah. So that's basically all the knowledge I've got. So whatever in the movies, but I've not seen the the series, any of the the Mando related stuff. Sorry, you still got time because then you'll get enough time to watch our exactly. review, and yeah. then we can put you on the Boba episode. BZ, Boba Fett, what are your thoughts? Django Fett, I know you watched the prequels. We want to hear what's on your mind, bro. I loved, as a kid, I admired that they both had jetpacks. I just loved oh, yeah. Django. <laughs> Did they both have jetpacks? Yeah. yeah, it's, oh, yeah. Well, it's, yeah. it's actually his whole set of armor that was passed down, right? And that's called the Flying Phoenix is what it actually is called from uh, Mandalorian terms, but yeah, go, sir, go ahead, BC. But yeah, that's, a, yeah, that's a, that, that was just super sick to me because they were the only characters that could like fly around other than those specific <laughs> uh, stormtroopers. But yeah, it was, troopers, it was yeah. awesome. And then uh, other than that, their ship is super cool, the way that they have it designed and they're able to like uh, maneuver through that meteor belt in that one movie. I don't even know which one off the top of my head, but... Yeah, That's dope characters, and I love the clones. continuation of Bobo with Mando, so I love the character. Yeah, man, and we can't wait to see more. I mean, we're going to hear more about it. He, I, I think Boba Fett wants redemption for his father's death, so The we'll model see. is a fast spray gunship, and the name of it is, yeah, the Slave One, right? So he yeah, repaints gonna... it green and stuff, so. Yeah. yeah. Slave One, yeah. All right, let's go to um, one of BZ's favorite characters. If you see his avatar right there, is General Grievous, wielding Ooh. two swords. He's not a let's he's go. not a Sith. He's not a Sith, but how does he wield those swords? Babs, give us the insight on how this the full breakdown. Brain I, uh, uh, I'll give everyone the full the full breakdown here on give us the uh, breakdown and Then we want to hear BZ nerd out on his hundred percent. So yeah, so a lot of people actually misinterpret uh, Grievous. They think he's like almost fully cyborg. He, he he is. He has essentially like an organ, an organ sack, and just his like, it's just like a pumpy spine, heart, I he? guess. And then his and no, it's like it's like almost like kind of his some of his organs. Yeah, then, yeah. Uh, is his brain and then eyes. So uh, he's he's originally a a Kalish species from the planet Kali, and he was a warlord for a while, and then. Uh, yeah, some tragedies happened and stuff, and he was taken and modified and trained by Dooku. So he's pretty ruthless, and he was trained by one of the greatest uh, saber wielders and duelists of all time. So there you yeah. go ahead, boys. Tra- trained by Dooku, Doku, who was a Jedi and then turned to the dark side. So he's got mm-hmm. a little bit of that power, and he wields those two swords. Um, but BZ, we'll let you start first. I mean, how did? why did you fall in love with Grievous? Well, it was actually the first Star Wars movie I saw in the theaters as a kid, and I went and sat front row with my dad, and I was kind of terrified, but just, like, also just shook with emotion, and I loved it, and I went to go see it again the next week and didn't sit in the front row that next time, but I just, I took it in, and General Grievous stood out to me the most because he was he he wields Jedi lightsabers, which as a bad guy, it's interesting to me as a kid. I'm like, how does he get those? And then hearing from a, an, a Star Wars expert like Babs that he got them from slaying uh, Jedis is pretty sick to know. And he's just, he's got so much backstory and lore to him and he's a dope character. So I'll let yeah. Zach take the rest. Yeah. No, he's right. That's what I was going to mention, how like, how he got his sabers is that he took them from other Jedi. It's just sweet. The idea that each one of those is an individual kill. He's which is just crazy. Exactly. Yeah. And, and for and me, I mean, six of them. Yeah. yeah. And, and 
what I what's so cool about him is just he's one of the most badass looking Star Wars characters ever, right? I mean, just look at him. Obviously, Darth Maul to me is also another aesthetically like badass looking like villain, but Grievous also is like he's he's dope. He definitely looks dope. So, all right, let's go to um, Baz. Talk to us about Lando Clarissian. Is he also a smuggler? Is he a space pirate? I know he clashes with Han. They did the Kessel Run. Talk to us about Lando. Yeah, so uh, he's actually the original owner of the Millennium Falcon, right? So mm-hmm. we uh, learned a bit about him, but uh, yeah, he's a gambler, smuggler, like uh, I guess he's a businessman a too. The he's pirate. also a thief, yeah. And, and you, then... can him, you can watch him in we don't, um, in the solo story because he's played by, I know, Zach's boy, and I know I'm a big fan of Donald Glover. And rumor is that at least they, he it was proposed that he was going to get his own show. I still want it to happen, but we don't it, we don't know the development yet. But Babs obviously he 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 runs the space uh, with I think he loses obviously the uh, the Falcon two Han, and then that that is is the rest. But then he also pops up in kind of a little bit of a betrayal in uh, Empire Strikes Back, which puts a switcheroo on Han and the squad. Right? Tell us about yeah. that, and then uh, and then if, you know. Do you are you a fan of Lando as a character? I am a fan of Lando as a character. Um, yeah, so originally he actually had a blue paint job on the Falcon. You can yep. see that in uh, Star Wars Battlefront Two is a yeah. decently you'll, recent example of that. You'll but, see it on um, our thumbnail too. It's on our thumbnail. Yeah, it, yeah, it's nice. But um, so what people don't realize is the the grip that the Empire actually has on like towns and cities and whatever is like extremely tight, right? Like. He did, he did not have a choice to betray Han or not, right? Like, there was no choice for him. It was either die or, <laughs> right? Like, you, you, know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? So, or, or betray Han and maybe survive. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, when they were on Bespin, yeah. Like, that's, people don't realize, dude, Vader is so ruthless. Like, yeah. Most yeah, of what he, we see in Vader in the films is him dealing with his offspring, right? So obviously he's not going to be as harsh and as like menacing. Trying to, yeah, he, he didn't kill Luke, right? In episode five, he easily could have. So, yeah. But, yeah. yeah, Zach, what do you think about Lando? I know you like the smooth, smooth yeah. uh, operator. I, operator. Yeah, I like Lando. Um, same thing as we were talking about Han Solo. He's kind of just the He's like the, he's the more I don't give a f version of Han Solo, where Han Solo kind of has more of a a motive behind him. He's always kind of doing something for something. Lando has a motive, but yeah, yeah, but he's got a motive. And Lando's kind of more so just like he's living every <laughs> second. Like he's gambling, he's yeah. flying. Like he just he doesn't care about what's gonna happen. He's just acting at all times. Mm-hmm. It's like an animal with its instincts. You gotta He's love him. He's a He's straight pimp. Pimp. Yeah. I don't know if BZ muted. BZ, if you were there, if you want to talk about Lando, if not, we can. I don't know if you're there. If not, we can keep going. All right. Let's talk about B- Bab. This will be more so for you. And, and if you have an opinion on it, Zach, you can talk about it. But Admiral Akbar. I think he's an important character. I don't have the lore background or the depthitude or whatever to say how far he goes down in the history books, but obviously his most famous words are, it's a trap, right? So we all trap. Love trap. And we love that meme. But tell us about Admiral Akbar. Tell us why he's so important, more than I know of, and then share that with the Star Wars family. Let's go. So he's a big rebel pilot right for the resistance and um he's a mon calamari species yep, and yep, they were mon, they, yep. they never they never sided with the empire right so well, yeah he was influential throughout the most of the resistance and he, he yeah, was an uh, ally to the, to the rebel force right mm-hmm. and he's he's a very well liked character and very well known through the it's a trap line so yeah yeah all right. Well, I like him. I don't know, Zach. Do you know anything else besides it? it's a trap? That's about all I know. I mean, <laughs> what he has about five minutes of movie time. I think it's about it, and it's pretty much. He that. looks funny. It's yeah. Bad, it's a, yeah, he's so cool. Yeah. It's a trap. And then you get a little bit of 
his Mon Calamari counterpart in Rogue One. Check that out. Yeah. What is it? Let's shout out. Let's give him a shout out, Babs. What's the other guy's name? I there actually I'm... don't know his name. He's I know he has. He's grayscale. He's, uh, yeah, he is um, black. Black tone. Oh, I remembered it too. It, you, oh man, or I remember. I had I have to look it up, but yeah. So that was kind of cool. The Mon so. Calamari species are really really cool though. They actually are very um, highly advanced. Their uh, civilization and everything. Calamari baby. <laughs> Yeah, we know the next character. Calamari. So. Uh, I mean, shoot, I'm trying to find the name. Space but, Calamari. Rogue One. Admiral, Admiral Radis is the. That's it. Oh, Radis. Nice. Radis. Yeah, yeah, nice. there you go. Thanks, that was I him. Dude, he was cool. He was cool. All right, well, keep moving on. Uh, Bap, or BZ, you said he was cool looking, right? Yeah, I don't know much about him. I just know yeah. he's funny looking. <laughs> we're gonna, we got a couple more to wrap up here. Um, and uh, we got a two for one right here. Cat, we got Commander Cody and Captain Rex. Talk about those babs. These are, you know, heavy in the prequel lore, in the in the Clone Wars Rebel uh, lore. I'm hoping we get a little glimpse of that in Obi Wan. We absolutely awesome. will. Cody yeah. will hundred percent appear. Yeah, like I think some, so. Something, then, something about him. There has to be his story wrapped up or something because yeah. he sadly did stay uh he did Behind. stay uh as a order 66 follower right but we'll we'll see what happened to him because uh, the clones a lot of them had pretty sad uh Endings. and ends to their life yeah yep. so uh, rex and cody are some of the two most well-known um, they're called uh, arc troopers right mm -hmm. so they're bad, bad. They look badass. They're, they look more, you know, cooler than the stormtrooper. They're, and they're a clone yeah. trooper. So. Mm -hmm. well, and they have it, a special it, set of training and everything to be that high rank and everything. You have to be selected. And yeah, so it, Cody is uh, uh, Obi Wan's commander, and then uh, Rex is Anakin's commander throughout the duration of the Clone Wars. And yeah, so. I can't wait to see Rex, man. And I mean, I know he's popped up even more recent, as more than Cody. But you guys know uh, Commander Commander Cody. I mean, you've probably seen him, but you're not familiar with him. And Captain Rex, are you busy? Yeah, Cody's sick, dude. I was watching uh, the 2D series with Babs the other night, and nice. he was in there, and yeah, he was slain, and yeah, dope character. Sweet, bro. Uh, um, talk about. Padme, Babs, Ooh. that's prequel era, played by Natalie Portman, who's in you know in Marvel Universe, Star Wars Universe, you know Anakin's other half, Skywalker. She plays a critical role in obviously the offspring. Tell us about Padme. So Padme is uh, obviously Anakin from a young age. His love interest, he's always finds her attractive and. Uh, he, he finally manages to make that connection happen when he has some alone time with her. So, yeah, they uh, they fall in love and they have two kids, uh, Luke and Leia, and then uh, she dies of a kind of unknown cause. But uh, mm -hmm. it's kind of believed that it's just kind of her feeling uh, Anakin turned to the dark side is what kind of caused her yeah. to die. So. Yeah, that and she. Yeah, no, I think I think so. I, well, there was no medical complications with her birth. There was none that we the, that we're aware of. But she did birth it. two force users. Well, one sensitive well, and one force user. Yeah, but the medical times and everything, like she was in a like extremely high class facility, and the yeah, droid, the, like the birthing yeah. droid that she had, is top, 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 top of the line. You got to remember that, like this is a like royalty we're talking about here. So. That's true. Like she yeah, had yeah. like top of the line stuff. So yeah. like they knew what was going on and, and the droid okay. says for some reason, for some unknown well, it was reason, frowned, it was frowned upon that Anakin would even talk to her. That was a, that was completely mm -hmm. frowned upon. So that yeah. Jedi would have done that. So um you guys are probably fan Zach, you you know Natalie Portman, Padme. You probably a big fan. Tell us about your thoughts. Yeah, yeah. I like Padme. She's like She's our she's generation's Leia. Yeah. Where it's like, it's even though, like, even though she, is she is the older one, one um, you're echoing you're a bit, Gary, by the way. Oh, okay, I'm mute. Go ahead. Um, um, but yeah, she's like the original Leia. 
for our generation where it's like the star wars princess that's hot and and your guy that you're rooting for gets her at the end but then plot twist he's not the good guy but you know overall i think padme's probably the number th- what two or three i mean probably t- she's top five female characters in star wars right so top, top like, three easy yeah yeah 100%. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we'll get that in that argument another day yeah but yeah for sure bz padme thoughts uh, I think her role in episode or Revenge of the Sith is just sick, and it's unfortunate her her death, but she plays a huge role in the franchise of Star Wars, so she's a big character to not forget about for sure. Yep. Now, final two characters that we're going to talk to talk about are two Grand Admirals. Babs, talk to to people about the two one that we're talking about. So we got, I think, Grand, Ma- Grand Admiral Thrawn and Grand Moff uh, Tarkin. So, so uh, yeah, Thrawn is someone we haven't seen in canon yet, but... Uh, no, well, he's, no, he's, he is a canon. Mentioned, he he's has rebel. been mentioned canon, though. He is Rebels yes. canon. I mean, I mean, like, movie canon. Yeah, live but, action. Uh, live yet. action, sorry. He'll yes, be in Ahsoka. Yes, but uh, has been mentioned... Yes, through Ahsoka in uh, in the Mandalorian, but yeah, check out our someone Mandalorian. who's a very very smart and ruthless general who's extremely tactical and uh, only focuses on like essentially how to like better himself for the next battle and is only worried about winning. That's like number one for him. So yeah, and then Grand Moff Tarkin is is more so uh, I would say evil, but uh, yeah, he's very very like pro empire and just. Follows whatever the empire needs to get done. So, it's, it, who was the one who called the strike on Tatooine? On or not Tatooine. on Tatooine. Not on Tatooine. On the on the um, planet for uh, what? The Amidala's. You know the the rebel on planet. Le- Leia's homeworld. Leia's planet. Yeah. Uh, Alderaan, oh, yeah. right? On Alderaan, that was yeah, yeah. Uh, Tarkin, yes. That was Tarkin, yep. He called the Death Star. He, he, he made that hit. Well, it was him and Vader, kind of, but yeah. Well, yeah, correct. He executed the order, though, didn't he? I think so, yeah. Yeah, so um, those are cool. I mean, I don't know if you guys have seen the Rebels, because Ron is in there, Tarkin's in the original movie, so you wouldn't have seen them on the prequel side. I know you guys resonate more with the prequel side, but check them out. Those guys are two sinister villains non-sith users but um i mean tarkin is in his own tactical world unaffiliated with the star with the vader side that's with moff uh tarkin so pretty cool um we'll talk about some more other ones bz you have any thoughts on any of them if you know them? uh no i don't really know of the characters i are they the characters that are running like the front command on the death star is that who you're talking about yeah tarkin is that'd be tarkin that'd be tarkin thrawn you've only would have seen him in the oh he's dope yeah in rebels he's the he's the blue face character yeah the blue guy what is that he's a chiss chiss species yeah so he's that and he's coming he got his name dropped by ahsoka in one of the last episodes of season two of mando but so he's going to be in the ahsoka series um so that's yet to be cast. We're hoping it's it's going to be the voice. Lad so yeah, the, the Chiss themselves are an outer rim species that are like really just intelligent, like on their own, just to be able to survive in the outer rim because it's it's like very barren out there. And yeah, so he he becomes like one of the highest ranking commanders in the in the fleet for sure. Yeah, so definitely can't wait to see his story. Known in the legends world. All right, well, those are all the characters we're going to talk about today on this episode seven of uh, Star Wars characters. We have another one coming up soon here. It's going to be droids, and then also some of the characters in the newer movies uh, and the new saga. So we want to thank you guys for joining us from Star Wars Sense for the Palace. Drop some comments on other characters you want us to talk about. Drop a like, subscribe, join the Discord. So thank you guys for Star Wars Palace from the homies. Peace. Peace. Peace.